This is the On the Pony Express podcast, hosted by Billy Embody, brought to you by Epic Estate Wines, walking strong on the Pony Express, a weekly segment with SMU alum, owner, vintner of Epic Estate Wines, Bill Armstrong. Epic Estate Wines, world-class wines from Paso Robles Wine Country. Learn more, Epic, E-P-O-C-H, EpicWines.com. And now your host. And now your host, Billy Embody. One, two, three, let's go. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Megan from San Diego. I'm Emily from Atlanta. And let's get this thing rolling. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Walking Strong podcast with Bill Armstrong. Bill, what a day out here. We're sitting under the Christmas Unbelievable. tree. Unbelievable. <laughs> We're at the Christmas tree right here in front of Dallas Hall. Like we own the place. <laughs> By the way, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Big Thanksgiving week. Yes. Happy Fantastic. Thanksgiving. I'm Billy Embody. You are back in town. You you I'm hitched a ride town. up to Memphis. Did you come, uh, come I, back with anything? Oh, my God. I just want to say maybe the greatest away game I've ever been to for SMU. Unbelievable. I want to thank my good friends, Richard Ware and Tucker Bridwell, for giving me a ride up and back. Totally spontaneous. I was out on the tarmac just thumbing a ride, and they just <laughs> slowed down, and I just jumped on the wing, and I made it. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. Can you believe it? We're 9-2. and two. That, that was uh, the win everybody was uh, hoping for. You know what? I will say, that, and you remember me saying this at the beginning of the season, we're going to lose our first two away games, OU and TCU, because it was early in the year, and then we were going to the, run the table beyond that. We're one game away. Yeah. I cannot believe it. Hey, before, before we talk about the game, can I just talk about one thing? I just want to riff on one thing. Um, I found out for a fact this week that it was in fact TCU and and probably Baylor that kept us out of the Big 12. You know, we always hear the story that you think your girlfriend's cheating on you, but when you finally find out <laughs> she actually was cheating on you, you're, you're more mad. And I'm just saying, Baylor and TCU played this week. And I'm going to call that game forever going forward the Cinderella Bowl. And here's the reason why. Because they're like the two ugly stepsisters in Cinderella. I think her names were Drizella and Anastasia. So they kept Cinderella, SMU, like hidden up in the attic. And uh, tried to keep it from going to the ball. And those two under-talented, overrated, keeping the better school, the smarter school, the better town out of the Big 12. And I know for a fact they did that now. And so I just want to say, that just kind of sucks. SMU would not have done that to TCU or Baylor. If the, if the, if the roles had been reversed, yeah. we would have said, hell yeah, you know, geography, history, blah, blah, blah. Let's keep them in the league. Yeah. But, you know, they didn't. And so I now know that for a definitive fact. So from this day forward, the Cinderella Bowl, because the two ugly <laughs> stepsisters, Drizella and Anastasia, a.k.a. TCU, Baylor, Kept Cinderella down, kept SMU down. Do you write but, him a thank you note? We should, you know, <laughs> because guess what? We went to the ball, and we're going to live happily fucking ever after. You know? I'm just saying. Yeah, we're surrounded by all these ACC <laughs> yeah, signs. Oh, yeah, I know. Isn't that great? great? So anyway, Drizella Dykes and Anna, Anna Baylor. And, and trying... Anastasia Aranda. <laughs> but I like David. I like David. I like David. It wasn't his fault. Well, I used to like I used to like Sonny. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. Yeah, there we go. And everybody knows I have a history with Sonny, and it, it was very, very personal. So let's go back to the game, won't you? Yes. I could go on this last story for a while. You want to keep going on the whole uh, <laughs> Baylor TCU <laughs> thing? God damn it. Anyway, let's talk about the, uh, yeah. the, the Memphis game, because that was a thing of beauty. Uh, so many things about the game. By the way, right out of the box. And this is to all the Memphis fans. I'm sorry about this, but I'm sorry that you have to live in Memphis. It's a, it's a bit of a dump. The only the I'm only just, good thing of, that came from Memphis it, is my wife. Your wife's from Memphis. Yeah. No, FedEx came from Memphis. Yeah, and, yeah and, that and, and, and we Michelle. like FedEx. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, <laughs> but I will say this: I will not miss uh, the town. Yeah. Of Memphis, no. But the fans were great. Yeah. That that stadium, Liberty Stadium, the the the, the seats go right right up to the edge of the sideline yeah and unlike tcu fans that come up with these really clever things like smu or eat smu the the, the memphis fan could you flip that up yeah. <laughs> the memphis fans were like all right that was a bad call sorry about that i mean they were just they were classy wow and then after the game here we were celebrating they lost and as i was walking to the parking lot 
no less than 10 different Memphis fans came up and said, way to go. You guys have a really good team. I'm really happy for you guys. Enjoy the ACC, blah, blah, blah. It was classy. Wow. It was classy. Now, Memphis, the town, kind of dumb. And Graceland's overrated. I'm just saying. Yeah, Graceland. It, yeah, it, it it's, it's a little overrated. Yep. Anyway, to the game. Um, it was, I was, to, I, I, I miscalled the game on our prediction. Mm-hmm. You told me how good Seth was. Yeah. And he really was good. Hennigan. Yeah. I mean, oh, he man. was really good. Preston had the best half yep. yet as as a pony. The second half was he was like a, a, essentially there was two terrible uh, interference non calls. Yep. One in the end zone and one on the one at the second to last drive, I think it was. Mm-hmm. It was a, maybe a flawless second half for him. Yeah, I think 11 of 14, over 200 yards, just. I, he clicked all the right buttons. I mean, that drive, that that second scoring drive of the half where they went down in four plays. Oh, my right God. Right after Memphis had tied it. Oh, was man. Just those throws were next level. That's why. They were, they were next level. That's it, why he's it, the guy was, right now for us. And, in fact, I, I was sitting there thinking, we're scoring so fast that our defense is going to get worn down. Mm. Because we would get the ball 45 seconds later, we're, we're in. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. Where they were just, you know, dinking it and dinking it down the field. I mean, how many times did, did Seth throw the ball? 50, 51, 51 times. Fifty-one times. Yeah. Holy crap! By the yards. Way, by the way, so my uh, my uh, epic bottles of the game. I, I have to give it up to Preston. Yep, I have to. Hundred percent. LJ. Yeah. He is showing that he is a gem, as far as I one of our running back to back hundred yard games. Back to back hundred yard games. And he never really broke one. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like he like had a seventy five yarder and then yeah. had a bunch of you know short runs. I mean, he was five, six, eight carry yeah it was amazing kamar showed he still still got awesome it. and uh rooster got injured the first play second play yeah. of the game still managed to get a touchdown he still managed <laughs> to get a touchdown but i saw him on the sideline you know right in front of me the whole time and he was he was limping he had a hurt ankle yeah. you know so um so lj and preston and i got to give it to the defensive line we held them to what 63 yards yep, rushing on the ground yeah on the ground yeah. that's incredible yeah I that mean, and blake watson had come in and looking i he was kind of on track to go over the thousand yard mark against SMU. Doesn't do it because they stepped up. Like you can have all the yards that Seth Hennigan threw for, and trust me, they got him, and it was frustrating to watch. Mm-hmm. But they were one dimensional because of the way the defensive line was playing. Yeah, no, I, that's exactly right. So that was that was just terrific. I I really felt comfortable at halftime. Yeah, and we came out in the second half and we had that one eighty yard drive or whatever it was. Yeah. It was just. Phenomenal. And uh, so we should, really should have won by 10. Yeah. You know, we kind of gave them that. that we were Five playing. To, what's that prevent? What, what do they yeah, say about prevent, it? Prevent, prevent you from winning. Prevent you from winning. <laughs> we had that prevent defense in there. And they came right down to make So they made it kind of interesting at the end. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Levine uh, recovers. the you know, Oh, Mr. Mr. Reliable. Yep. You know, so anyway, so uh, I loved it. I just, I, it was maybe the biggest biggest win for SMU in 20 years. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, 100%. When, you, when you think so much on the line. I mean, you know, they went to a championship game uh, about a decade ago mm-hmm. now, but that was not involving any sort of New Year's Six opportunity. I mean, there is so much on the line for SMU when Navy comes to town this week, but also they can win that one and then win the next one. Yep. They're going to be not playing on necessarily New Year's Eve or New Year's Day depending on what days the bowl are, but a New Year's Six opportunity would be unbelievable. Oh, I think I think there's a chance. Yeah, hundred percent. I think there's a really good chance, actually. Yeah. So uh, before we leave, uh, before we skip over Navy, because they're always a tough out. Yep. Um, the Tulane UTSA game this weekend is going to be really interesting. Massive. If Tulane wins, we play in New Orleans, right? Yep. And if UTSA wins, we probably play most likely most likely in most Dallas. Likely. Yep. So. I'm a Tulane fan, and I kind of want to get payback for last year, so I'm yeah. kind of pulling for Tulane. Yep. But I would like to play at home. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and UTSA is hard hard to figure out. I think. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, so um, so you want to talk any more about the Murphy uh, the uh, Memphis game? Man, I I just think you've got to enjoy those wins when mm-hmm. they happen. Mm-hmm. And yes, it was not perfect and. Uh, the defense has to clean up a little bit in the secondary for sure, but for them to go in there and, you know, first time in a decade, oh, yeah. you know, vanquish that, 
to do it the way they did. I thought the fourth quarter, save for that Memphis touchdown drive, was was dominant. I mean, to have a drive like that be that you know final stamp in the coffin of yeah. of Memphis yeah. was awesome. I, I loved it. I also loved it that the defense, uh, the the offense had the defenses back. Defenses yes back this yes. game as opposed to the other way around. They talked about it so much early in the year that yeah. you know at some point. Offense yep. is going to need to do it. Offense yep. is going to need to and do they it. Did. And they did it when it mattered and, most. And they did it. They did it. Yeah. And, uh, again, we th- the only criticism I would have of Preston is I wish he uh, and Likens would sit down with the game film and if Preston can learn to dink it down on just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yep. The way Seth does. Yeah. You know, where you're yeah. not always looking for the 35-yard pass. Yeah. But, you know, it's okay to go, you know, to the option down. Yep. You know. Uh, he'll learn that. Yep. I mean, it's still his rookie year. He's gotten a lot, gotten a lot better at it oh, throughout the season. Me? I mean, I mean the, it, it was a lot feast better. or famine early. Yeah. Nope. It's 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 really great. And um, man, I mean, RJ, that first. I thought we were going to run away with the game. The first play of the game, we you know. Oh, God, 40, yeah, I thought 42. there was a shot. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, like typical Memphis, they play tough. Yes. They always did. Yep. All right, let's go to the wine. Yes. This week, as we transition to Navy, um, people ask me all the time, "What is my favorite wine that we produce?" And I would have to say probably it's authenticity. Wow. Authenticity is 80% Shiraz or Syrah, 20% more Vedra or Moved, as we say in the business. <laughs> and uh, this wine is absolutely spectacular. I can, tell you why, I can tell you why we name it authenticity, but it's so geeky. Um, it's so geeky wine talk. It's about phylox- phylloxera and planning on your own rootstock and <laughs> authentic vines and all that. So I'm not going to go into that, but it would be very educational for me to tell Mustang Nation that. We've just, got like, an off season. Uh, just like it was very educational for t- me to tell Mustang Nation how chicken shit Baylor and TCU <laughs> yes. were, you know? Exactly. They this need, is a learning they, podcast. They need to know that. It's a learning. We're all about dropping knowledge. Yeah. Right? So the truth, um, the truth shall uh, but, set you free. But the reason I picked authenticity before Navy is because I just love the cadets. Yeah. I love the midshipmen. Yeah. By the way, in the woke culture, is it going to go with midship person? Is it going to change the name to mid? Can it still be midship? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. At some, at some point. I don't know. But I mean, when you get, when you go there, when you go to Annapolis and you see the campus and you see all the cadets walking around, you know, they're in their their uh, uniforms, mm-hmm. and every time they see a superior officer, they salute. Yeah. By the way, have you never saluted me? I'm kind of superior. <laughs> I mean, have you ever once just said that? Huh? You know what? Uh, maybe maybe on the field in New Orleans. How about that? <laughs> maybe thinking, after the Florida State game next year. I know I'm seriously year, so older and well, you know, I mean, I mean, earned it, a few spurs. I mean, shouldn't I just be like skirting away from you in, in my general league car <laughs> since you're boss hog? <laughs> <laughs> that was anyway, really, we really got off. Anyway, so I love, I, 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 love, I love the cadets. And I'm going to miss them. Of all the, the teams in the American I'm going to miss Navy the most. Yeah. I don't enjoy playing Navy very yeah. much because they're so funky. Yeah. Uh, they run that offense where, you know, it's kind of the veer, whatever yes. they call it. Um, and so, you therefore, you got to prepare special for them. So, it's weird playing them. But I just love the cadets. And the Frank yeah, Gans trophy on the and line. And the Frank Gans trophy on the line. We, we, we control it. We've played them 24 times, and they've won 13, and we've won 11. Yeah. That's the deal. So but, it's good for SMU. It's not at Annapolis on senior day. They always play well there. They always do. They always do. But I do kind of want to kick their ass as much as I kind of like Navy because I am still pissed about 2016. Yeah. The, they ran the score on, up on us. It was the no Se- punt game. 75. No pass. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't do a pass. They had over 500 yards on the ground. And they did run the score up on us. I mean, in a very kind of Drizella Dykes kind of chicken shit <laughs> way, they ran the score up on us. New coaching staff, kind of. Well, yes, but I'm still saying – Yes. Well, for all coaches out there, now. for all coaches out there, don't ever do that because it leaves a bad taste in the mouth of the opposition yeah. for a yeah. long time. Yeah. People don't so here that. I am still thinking about 2016 yeah. and watching that game. And they've just, they, I think they scored like 28 points in the fourth quarter. It was, and it was 75 points. I mean, yeah. come on. That does feel like Sunny Dykes, you think? Yep. Anyway, so uh, I want to I want to get after him this week. Um, and stress I, I, free, I, maybe big lead at half, just kind of cruising. You into, never get a big lead against Navy because they just they, they grind the ball, take your and possessions so down. They take your possessions down, yep. and they just you know it's six yard, it's six minutes of drive, yep. you know da 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 da. So uh, 
I just want to come out with a, with a win, uh, hopefully a double-digit win. I, I'm going to go out and say I think it's uh, SMU by 14. Do you want to know what the line is? No. What is the line? 20. What? Yeah. How about that? People don't even score 20 points against Navy, typically. <laughs> I mean, they don't let you score that many points. That's the line. I, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with old reliable here. I'm going to go 45-17. Well, you were stuck on that number. It's awesome. Uh, well, it's worth why, why would you change? Week. Well, why? how about 38-34 last week? <laughs> I know that last as an touchdown. As an I wasn't. I wasn't going to be that far off. Not, I was going to be, be right on it. I know. For the I most know, part, I know. I know. We really had to make it interesting. Yes. Well, anyway, looking forward to Saturday. It'd be yeah. Great. Eleven a.m. Er. You know what? At eleven a.m. always feels like the undercard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like at least the, it's on ESPN too. Uh, well, that's good. But it's like you know the the main fight's going to be at two or five, but the pre-fight is at eleven. And we've had so many games this year at eleven. But hey, uh, see you on the boulevard. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to we you. Have happy so, Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. You know, and um, not just for football and SMU and everything else, but everything else in life. Yeah. So, Billy, Cheers. I appreciate you, buddy. Yep. Okay. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening, guys, to another edition of the Walking Strong Podcast. Make sure to check out epicwines.com. Get you some wine in time for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our wine pairs beautifully with, yep. Thanksgiving, with Thanksgiving turkey. Yep. Came in, uh, uh, my box came in this week. Oh, it week. did? Yes, it did. Hello. Yeah. So, the cheers, few, guys. The feud the proud. Yep. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on 3 and on Instagram at on 3 SMU. And keep it locked to OnThePonyExpress.com for more coverage.